Hello, you guys. Um, this is a set of warm-up questions that go with single replacement reactions and using the activity series on your reference sheet. So before you attempt these, I want you to locate your reference sheet and you're looking at what should be labeled as page two on your reference sheet. Um, some reminders, and I, for some reason, when I do it like this, I cannot zoom in. So I'm just going to have to manually zoom, I guess, here. But um, this is what we're looking at, the activity series box. Remember this first set of boxes from here all the way down to gold, those are for cation replacement. So when a cation wants to replace another cation, remember how you use this is the standalone cation, the one that's by itself, will only allow the reaction to happen if it is on top of, if it's listed above the cation that's already part of an ionic compound. Okay, so think king of the mountain. If it's on top of the mountain, it's strong enough to replace that ionic or the cation that's in the ionic compound. Okay, this bottom list is for anion single replacement reactions. Same rules apply. The anion that is by itself is only going to be able to replace the anion in the ionic compound if it is on top of king of the mountain, if it's listed above the anion that's already part of the compound, okay? So what I want you to do is um, write these down, press pause, attempt to do these on your own. Um, some are purposely no reactions, others are not. See what you come up with and then come back in and check your answers to what I have. Okay, so hopefully you've had time to take a look at this. Um, if I look at this first question, again, what I'm asking is, is bromine strong enough, is it king of the mountain, to be able to kick out and replace the chlorine? You know, bromine is a negative and chlorine is a negative, so likes would replace likes if that were to happen. So that's only going to work if bromine is listed above chlorine. So I have to look on my activity series sheet, and bromine is not above chlorine. It is not strong enough. So this would be an example of no reaction, and we would just write it like that. Okay. Um, next, again, likes replace likes, negative and negative. Is iodine strong enough to replace and kick out fluorine? It, if it's listed above fluorine, then it is. Okay, so let's look. Is iodine listed above fluorine? And that answer is no as well. Okay, when we look here, iodine's below it. So this would also be a no reaction. Okay, now we're using the top um, tables, the cation replacement table, and we are looking at hydrogen and asking ourselves, is hydrogen strong enough, likes replace likes, and I'm not looking at charges, really. I realize I don't have the right charge, but at least I know it's a cation. Is hydrogen strong enough to replace copper? If it's above copper on the activity series, it's king of the mountain, it is would be strong enough. So we look for where hydrogen is, which is right here, and hydrogen is listed above copper. So it is strong enough. Now, you know, don't discredit what these things say over here. These just give you some extra information. You know, all of this top box, they're so strong, they'll react with waters and they'll react with acids. So that's pretty strong metals. These um, will react, react with acids only. And then this group is fairly unreactive, okay, down here. So it's just kind of giving you a little more information of how strong those different metals are. So hydrogen is listed above copper. It is strong enough to replace it. It will kick it out. So what does that mean? Copper is not going to be by itself. And anytime we have something by itself, we have to ask, is it diatomic? And Brinkelhoff is not part of copper, so we don't have to worry about a subscript of two. Um, and now we're going to look at hydrogen and chlorine combined. Hydrogen is plus one, chlorine is minus one. So this is already um, correct, HCl. And then to balance the entire equation, I would need to put a two right there. Balancing single replacements, most of the time, are going to have really, really small coefficients. You're not going to see big stuff. You know, you will see big stuff with um, combustion problems a, a lot of times, but really all the other problems, you tend to have very, very simple coefficients that you need. Okay, what about this last one? So 
Is zinc, you're always asking, is this standalone strong enough to replace its like partner? So positive, you always have to identify, is this a cation that's by itself or an anion? Zinc is a cation. Is it strong enough to kick out and replace barium? If it's listed above barium, then it is strong enough. So we have to find zinc and we have to find barium. So zinc is here. We're looking, if, if it was strong enough to replace barium, barium will be listed somewhere down here because it's king of the mountain over barium, but barium is listed above it. So zinc is a weakling. It will not be able to break the bonds of barium in that compound. And so therefore there is no reaction. Okay, this would end up with a no reaction. Um, you know, side note, especially with metals, like as you get down here, and then we look at the other metals, this plays a huge role in material science, putting a plug in, as far as what metals we wanna be coating things with, okay? What is reactive, what is not reactive? Um, we don't want the metal to replace coat and react with something else. So, you know, it's something that's, that's thought about and considered Sometimes there's even certain metals purposely placed on the outside. Um, for example, um, zinc sometimes honestly is used and there's others that are placed like on the outside of a propeller uh, in, a, in a boat and it's called a sacrificial metal. And people that um, maintain boats know that whenever a certain part of that propeller goes down, is worn away, then it's time to replace it. And really what it is, is zinc will react with other things that are in the um, environment of that ocean water, whatever it might be. And once that zinc is gone, it's time to replace that propeller. So, you know, material scientists and other chemists take advantage of the activity series to actually decide what is the appropriate metal to be used under certain conditions. Because um, if they use the wrong metal, they're going to be in there replacing things very, very quickly. So they want to look at things that um, are going to react very, very slowly or be non-reactive. Uh, and unfortunately, those things that are extremely non-reactive, these metals down here, think of how expensive they are. You know, we're probably not going to have boats made out of copper. Um, we definitely shouldn't have them made out of mercury. Silver is very soft, gold very soft. So we can't use these fairly unreactive ones. So most of the metals used in materials are going to be in this category right here. And they have to be smart about which ones they use and what the purpose is. So the environment that those different metals are in. Uh, just a little side note, if you took material science, that would be things you learn, huh? <laughs> All right, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. And you're, I believe, about to learn a little bit about double replacements here. So enjoy. Good luck.